I'll have to admit, I don't remember exactly which Bardic Madness I wrote this for, but it was at least six to eight years old. And now, as I did then, I'm going to need a little audience participation. I have already recruited the same gentle Lord Llewellyn who helped me out at that former Bardic Madness. And if we could have two or three or four, or however many lusting ladies Lord Llewellyn feels he can handle, <laughs> please feel free to come up and lust after him. Not all of once. <laughs> well, I'm standing right here. <laughs> They're all afraid of Julian. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but Julian that is wise. in Ohio. And she was here. She was at Bardic Madness when the first time yeah, she did was. this. <laughs> now, the, the challenge itself was the lie direct, which you were supposed to, in any medium, tell an astonishing lie and then explain how it was a lie. He stands Horatio with ladies fair, all lusting after him. I know not why. No part of him is pleasing to my eye. No drives me thus to drown in love's despair. See how his eyes bulge in his toad-like face. His nose glows red as pomegranate seeds. His hair and beard sprout like a field of weeds. His bunk and garb is truly a disgrace. <laughs> I lie. Horatio shines as the sun beams down divinely in a field of flowers. Oh, that I could spend all my waking hours bathed in his beauty till the day be done. He cares not for those jades who snare his eyes. But if I mock his charm, charms with public scorn. He'll find my insults too false to be born and woo me solely to disprove my lies. <laughs> then, when those lies lead him my charms to see, they might inspire him to lie with me. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs>